So hey there everybody, welcome back. Right now we're gonna give in to some impatience. So getting a new drone is kind of like getting a new computer, isn't it? Uh, you gotta reset things, fine tune things, get it to where you like it. It's just like, you know, getting a new system where you gotta pop in your email addresses, all your programs, all your passwords. It takes a little bit of time. And I know when we get those new drones, we wanna get out there right away with them and start working with them. So we're going to do a couple of things here in this video. We're going to actually connect up the smart controller here to the, um, to the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So first thing I'm going to do, and like I said, we're giving into a bit of impatience here. So we're going to connect this up. I also need to get the gimbal off of the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So there we go, sitting right in front of me. And we're actually going to be powering up the Mavic 3 Enterprise so that we can take a look on screen at a couple things. But before I do anything else, let's go ahead and set up the screen recording on the device here. So if you don't know, I'm not close enough, but it's a swipe down. In the upper right hand side, we do have a screen recording button. And with some testing that I did yesterday in my previous video, I found that, yeah, the screen recording actually captures the audio as well. So let me get this set here. All right, and the screen recording is now going on. So I'm gonna set this one down for just a moment, and we're just gonna power on the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Now, not flying anywhere or doing anything like that, and we are in class to E2 airspace, so I'm not gonna be flying at this location at all. But let's power this up, because to see everything that we're gonna be interested in here, uh, the drone has to be on so that we can actually go through and see some of the system settings and things. Now, you can still go through the DJI Pilot 2 app, and when the drone is not connected, and you can access some features, but you can't access everything. So on the screen right here, I am gonna hit that DJI Pilot 2. I gotta get used to this. I have so many different DJI apps going on. So we're just waiting for this to sync up right now. And I've got my Fly with Caution, I've got the Mavic 3E, and it looks like Yep, I believe we are now connected. So in the upper right hand corner, which I showed you in a previous video, we're gonna go up and check out that normal button again because I just want you to see what's happened and what's changed. What's changed is all of these things are saying normal now. So it's actually doing a nice little check for us so we can see, you know, where's the drone at right now? Propulsion's normal, avionics normal, vision positioning normal, battery is at 72%. The remote controller is at 82% apparently. Um, you know, so that's our power. And there's a couple other items in here as well. We don't have RTK set up on this one. Uh, that will happen down the road. We're getting just totally introductory here first. So everything's looking good. By the way, I made mention in a previous video that the DJI care and maintenance program were not showing up for me when the drone was not connected. But once the drone is connected, and so we're just waiting on it, DJI care enterprise. And so it tells me Yes, in fact, I'm covered for the next two years on their Enterprise Basic. Now, if I were to disconnect the drone from this, I don't see that information anymore. Just an odd little thing there, but I thought I'd point it out. So, here we go. Let's be impatient, people. Let's take home a look around. Updated. Oh, and look at that. My home Check point is confirm. updated. So, we got that background noise. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Enter Camera View on the right-hand side. And now, we get to see a little more information in the pre-flight check. Now, I went through this in the previous video, and we didn't have all of this information here because the drone wasn't connected. I'll try to stop saying that over and over again. But now, we've got the drone set in end mode, and we've got our waypoint set. We've got our power 71%, controller power 81%, and our storage capacity 58.6 gigs. And we've got the controller, and it says make sure the uh, frame arms are fully unfolded, they are. So just a little warning message of the day, I guess there. But now we also can set up our return to homes here. Um, so max flight altitude, return to home, the home point. And then we can also deal with our uh, controller sensors. So how close do we have to get to something before it breaks, before it starts warning you? And this is all customizable as well. Once we're done with the pre-flight check, just upper right hand corner, we're gonna go ahead and tap that. And we're actually in the FPV, uh, FPV view now. So this is it. This is what we're going to be working with. This is what we're going to be looking at regularly when we're out in the field. And so we've got, you know, it feels a little like other DJI apps for flight. 
And there are some additions and some subtractions here. I'm gonna say up front, I've been playing with this just a little bit. There's a couple of things that have disappointed me. We're gonna take a look at those momentarily as we're walking through all this. So let's first look up at that top bar. We've got a normal. If I click that normal, it's gonna bring me back to that readout on what's good and what's not. Uh, center, we have the end mode. So that's the uh, normal mode and standby right now. We're not flying or anything. So even inside the walls of this home, 14 satellites, the RC's got good signal, battery's looking good. Right below that, we've got ISO, shutter, aperture, EV, and uh, we've got a lock here, and we also have AFC on, and we've got our storage numbers as well here. So we're looking good to go. On the left-hand side, let's go ahead and move ourselves back over. We've got a couple of new I items, well, at least new to me, maybe not to you if you've been using one of these controllers before, but we have a pinpoint item. That's the little uh, blue diamond there. We're not gonna do anything with that right now. And we also have what looks to be a waypoint planner. So if I tap this, because this is one of the things that I was really after getting this drone, was uh, being able to set up waypoints like I have with third-party apps for years now. And now that they have their flight missions as well built right into this, we're gonna see which ones we like over time. After I tap that, you can see the right-hand side, it says create a route. And so I could tap in here, and we've got a couple of route types. So we've got the waypoint, mapping, oblique, and linear. So if we were to say we wanted to do a waypoint mission, it gives us two ways to do it. Set waypoints right on the screen, tap, 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 or a live mission recording. So I can get out in the field, fly to where I want to, record the actions that I want to, and then bring the drone back to me. Those are the features that I really liked in Litchi and was using for years. So we'll see how this works, and we'll also see how this works compared against third-party apps that are working with this right now. I'm going to X out of this because I'm getting ahead of myself. I know we're being impatient, but I'm being extra impatient, so I'm going to dial myself back here. All right. So we've got those new features over on the left-hand toolbar. By the way, down at the bottom, um, the left-hand, there we go. We've got, our, we've got our street map area instead, and then we've got a small version of the, uh, the actual video feed. All right. I want to talk about the right-hand side because as we get out there and we start playing with this, before we start doing waypoints and things, I'm just gonna do some standard flights, right? We're gonna drive the sucker around, see how it feels, see how it moves, and um, you know, see how it captures stills and video. Then we'll worry about some of this autonomous flight stuff. But looking at that right-hand side, if we're gonna go out in the field and just take some photos or take some video, here's our readouts for the camera, right? So we've got ISOs at 800 right now. We are in a darker room here at the moment. Um, but that's okay, our shutter speed, 1 1 20th of a second, aperture is 2.8, um, our exposure is set right to the middle, zero. We've got the autofocus continuous, and then we've got an auto button to the right. So we could, in fact, go in and fine tune one of these, or many of these, if we wanted to shoot fully manual. So I could go in here and tap on the aperture, or I could take it off of auto, and from taking it off of auto, we've got shutter priority, aperture priority, and fully manual. Now, when we're doing our construction survey type flights, um, we're gonna have things on auto, and I'm just gonna pop back up to auto right now for our own comfort and sanity. Also, we've got this zoom item right here, so you know where we can zoom in with that 7X. Right now, though, we're in wide mode only, uh, so if you look at the center, you'll see the green box, wide. 1.0x and so I want to be shooting um, in wide right now. I don't want to start zooming things in here but apparently the zoom is pretty incredible on this too and we'll get to it. Um, what I want to look at next so we do have our zoom up and zoom down bar and you can use the uh, controllers um, little toggles here to zoom in and out very easily but that's not what I'm so concerned about here. All right right now if you're familiar with most drone controllers you can see that uh, we're in photo mode at the moment. We've got our little circle for taking a photo. We also have our clickable right here for taking photos and then clickable right here for starting and stopping video. What's interesting to me here is what's going on. Let's go ahead and press on the photo button. So I've now pressed on the photo button and you can see it's lit up yellow and we've got it shooting single shot or 
we have a time shot so we could have the drone hover somewhere and in 10 seconds take the shot. We have a pano mode. So, oh, and it says to me the aircraft is not in flight right now, so it's unable to take a panorama. If I was in flight, it could do a pano for me. It also has a smart setup, so apparently that helps us with our exposure. And then we have a high res grid. So high res grid's really cool. All right, pretty happy with this, but I'm missing something. So I've been doing HDR photography for well over a decade. I like being able to bracket photos. I like being able to bracket photos while I'm flying my drone as well. That's a feature that's been in my Mavic 2 Pro forever. Interestingly enough, there is no bracketing slash HDR feature here at all. So that's a bit of a bummer, but maybe that'll come with a firmware upgrade. But this kind of hit me in the gut when I saw this yesterday. I said, I don't have all the features that I'm used to just for my regular flight. Something of a bummer. All right, while we're here, we might as well take a look at the next thing. So you see the single and the photo, they're both highlighted yellow. Well, looking below the photo button, what do we have? We've got a video button. Here we go, awesome video. It's gonna be so, uh, wait a minute. That's, an, that's not exciting, is it? Uh, under our video options, we have two things that we can do on the Mavic 3 Enterprise. This is a little disappointing. Maybe a firmware upgrade? I don't know. Um, so what can we select about our video? Well, we can pick 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second, tried and true. And we can do the 3840 by 2160, so 4K at 29 frames a second. Um, gosh, is there anything, can I customize this any further? Let me tap out of the screen. So we're in the video mode, you see the video button right there. Right above it, there's some of our settings for our photography and for our video. And, oh, look at me, I'm tapping things again here. Yep, um, video format. Uh, I don't have any other selectable items here at all. Um, so we're looking at 30 frames a second on our videos, whether it's HD or 4K, and we are just doing um, we're just doing one video format. So no log, no nothing else. We got what we got. This this definitely frustrated me a bit, and um, I'm hoping that you understand as well. This is a little limiting. And if this is a flagship, if this is a flagship drone setup, I feel like I should have some more options on the video side of the house. Um, I'm gonna tap over further. And so here are some other settings for our video. We could create a video caption. Uh, maybe a customer wants that, I don't know. We can make a folder. I like folders. We can do a timestamp so we could have one of those annoying timestamps like the cameras back in the 80s. I don't think I'm gonna do that, but well, that's just me. Um, so we got timestamp, lock gimbal while shooting. We can do a grid, LED off while shooting, reset the camera settings, and format the memory card. So that's it. That's uh, all that we can really customize with our video side of the house here. I'm gonna untap that, and what I'm gonna do is go back, and we're gonna go back to that photo menu, because um, we have some other options in that photo menu too. So I'm gonna give this a tap, and Lock gimbal while shooting under photo, okay. Mechanical shutter is turned on. That's one of the reasons why we bought this drone, right? The mechanical shutter. Um, Dewarping is turned on right now. Um, we've got a grid option here. LED off while shooting, sure. Uh, reset camera settings, format memory card. So we're definitely missing some of our photo features, let's say from the Mavic 2 Pro, for instance. Um, but this drone, uh, the M3E, is all about doing that construction progression work and other types of work similar to that. So they're thinking about mapping and modeling areas. I totally get that, but I would like some additional flexibility with my capture modes. So it is not a deal breaker for me. The other day I was thinking about whether or not it was a deal breaker, and it's, it's not a deal breaker, but you should be forewarned that when it comes to customizing photo and video settings, you're kind of pretty much out of luck here. So we can reset the camera settings. We can also format the memory card. While I'm here, let's go ahead and format that memory card. All right, there we go. Memory card is formatted. So now I can turn this off. Once again, we're in the photo mode right now. And like I said, we do not have a lot of flexibility here. 
So that is an absolute shame, but DJI seems to be very fond of firmware updates lately, so there you go. So these are the major things that jump out and uh, should jump out and get your attention as well. And I just wanted to show you through initially. So we're going to be using this particular menu screen on this over and over again, as well as third-party applications as well. And so I just wanted to give you a brief overview and my warnings about the fact that we don't have a lot of flexibility when it comes to our camera settings for stills and videos. Now, in the next video, I think the next video is probably going to be just one of our class videos over on our Teachable site. And you'll see at the end of this video a link to the newest one in the series for the folks watching this on YouTube. But in my upcoming video, we are actually going to take the time, go through blindly trying this for the first time, installing uh, MapPilot Pro and installing Drone Harmony onto this M3E's controller. So we do have access to several autonomous flight apps. So we're gonna check them out and see how the installation goes and then see how the setups go for each of them. All right, everybody, we'll see you in the next video. I hope this was informative and helpful for you.